Section number 58, A History of the Inquisition of Spain, Volume 4. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. A History of the Inquisition of Spain, Volume 4, by Henry Charles Lee. Book number eight, chapter fourteen, part one, spheres of action, bigamy. From an early period, the church assumed jurisdiction over marriage, derived from the function of the priest for its due celebration, and when, in the twelfth century, matrimony was erected into a sacrament, its control became absolute. Monogamy was a distinguishing feature of Christianity, and marriage was declared to be insoluble. The sacrament could be enjoyed, but once during the life of both spouses, and its repetition was invalid, all of which naturally came within the province of the Episcopal courts. The infraction of the ecclesiastical law, however considered as an offense against society, was subject to secular penal statutes, and, under Partius, it was punishable with regulation to an island for five years and confiscation for the benefit of children, to which penalties won the first in this Cortes de Briviesca in 1387 added branding in the face. In 1532, the Cortes de Segovia petitioned to have it made a capital offense, which Charles V refused, but added half confiscation, and in 1548, the Cortes of Valladolid substituted the galleys in term for which Philip II, in 1566, defined as ten years with public vernusia. Thus, there was ample provision for the trial and punishment of the offense by the spiritual and secular authorities, and there was no necessity for the assumption of jurisdiction by the Inquisition. Presumably, it obtained a foothold through the laxity of the marriage tie among Moors and Jews, so that bigamy, like abstinence from pork and wine and change of linen on Saturday, created suspicion of hearsay. This showed itself first in Aragon. As early as 1486, the Saragossa Tribunal burnt in effigy the fugitive Dionys Guinot, a notary, for marrying a second wife during the lifetime of the first. A number of other cases followed in which bigamy is conjoined with Judaic practices. For simple bigamy, the penalty seems to have been perpetual prison the punishment indicated for two culprits in the auto of February 10th, 1488. It also involves confiscation for a letter of Ferdinand, October 22nd, 1502, to his receiver at Saragossa, orders him to deliver at certain parties 94 head of cattle confiscated on the bigamous Dorman Moral. In some way bigamy was construed as hearsay for in the Barcelona auto of February 3rd, 1503, Père de Santillana was required to abjure for marrying two wives, and that in the July 2nd of the same year, Père Ubac abjured for marrying in Rhodes and in Barcelona. This was one of the grievances of the Catalans, which they thought to remove in the Concordia of 1512, where it was agreed that bigamists, male and female, should be tried by the ordinaries and not by the Inquisition, but they unwarily allowed the insertion of a provision, unless they become erroneously as to the sacrament of matrimony or suspect in the faith. As for this practically left it to the discretion of the inquisitors, Inquisitor General Mercadier, in his instructions of 1514, was safe in telling the tribunals that they were not to try cases of bigamy unless there was presumption of erroneous belief as to the sacrament, 
and this was the answer sent in 1515 to the Sicilians when they made complaint of inquisitorial abuses. Leo X, when in 1516 confirming the Concordia of 1512 in the bull Pastoralis Officii, was careful to make the same reservation, but in this, as in everything else substantially gained by the Concordia, the subjects of the crown of Aragon found themselves deceived, and when the Cortes, about 1530, complained that the inquisitors assumed jurisdiction over bigamy, the curt answer was that they observed the provisions of the law. A case occurring in 1513 suggests ample justification for this struggle to prevent the Inquisition from acquiring cognizance of bigamy. In 1477, Don Jordi de Bardaxi betrothed himself by words de presente to Leonor Olinza, but, learning that she was pregnant or had borne a child, he never married her in the face of the church or consummated the marriage. He remained single, but she, in 1497, married Antonio Ferrer. In some way, the Sarasoga tribunal got wind of the betrothal twenty years previous and prosecuted her in 1513. In her defense, she alleged that Pardaxi had previously been married to Donna Juana de Luna, whereupon the tribunal commenced proceedings against him for the betrothal in 1477, and would have thrown him into the secret prison had he not been too infirm. He was a man of consideration and appealed for protection to Ferdinand, who ordered that he should not be arrested that every care be taken to culminate perjured testimony and that on conclusion of the case the papers be sent to inquisitor general mercadier the result is unknown but bardaxi was at least exposed to the terrors of an inquisitorial trial on a vague assertion of an indiscretion committed thirty-six years before whether there was any formal opposition in Castile, it would be impossible to say. There was a decided assertion of escopial jurisdiction in the Council of Seville, held in 1512 by Archbishop Deza, the former Inquisitor General, which opposed a fine of 2,000 maravedis on bigamists, in addition to the penalties provided by law long absence of a missing spouse was not to be accepted as an excuse and the death must be notorious or be duly proved before the ordinary before he could permit a second marriage still there was no special reclamation on the subject by the cortes of valladolid in 1518 nor any provision in the reform attempted through the chancellor jean le sauvage as in Aragon, the question turned theoretically upon the presumable hearsay of the bigamist. About 1534, Arnaldo Albertino devoted an elaborate discussion to the matter, but all this was academical rather than practical. In 1537, Dr. Giron de la Soya, in his inspection of Toledo, reported that he had found everywhere many bigamists. They were so numerous that the inquisitors prosecuted them without distinction as to belief, and he suggested that special orders should be accordingly issued as the offense was so evil and so frequent. This would have been superfluous, Symmachus admits that, if the culprit says that he knew that he could not have two wives, and thus did not err in the faith, it would seem that the Inquisition was estopped from proceeding. But custom had prevailed, though it would appear wiser to leave them to the episcopal courts. In a later work, however, he says that the Inquisition prosecutes them as thinking wrongly of the sacrament and impiously abusing it. Thus it became settled, and otherwise the Inquisition would have been obliged to abandon its jurisdiction for about sixteen Forty, an experienced inquisitor tells us that the accused never admitted hearsay, 
but always professed consciousness of guilt. He was always asked whether he regarded a bigamous marriage as lawful, and, if he answered in the affirmative, he was to be punished as a heretic. To keep up this fiction, the formal accusation by the fiscal asserted hearsay, or at least suspicion, at first in a simple form, but subsequently with much amplification, stigmatizing the accused as an apostate heretic, or at least gravely suspect in the faith, for thinking ill of the holy sacrament of matrimony and its institution, and adopting the error of the heretics against the prohibition of polygamy, with the same view he was always required to abjure for subsistion of hearsay, in the earlier time de venemy, but later de levy. The flimsiness of the pretext, however, is exposed by the fact that, in the Suprema, bigamy cases were always considered in the afternoon sessions, at which assisted the two lay members of the Council of Castile, and where public pleas and other secular matters were discussed. Still, when the jurisdiction once was acquired, it was asserted to be exclusive and was defended with customary aggressiveness. The civil magistrates were unwilling to surrender their immemorial cognizance of the crime, and assumed that it was mitzi forti, leaving to frequent collisions. The tenancy with which these contests were conducted is illustrated in a Sardinia case. In 1658, where the royal court arrested Michel Fori for bigamy, when the inquisitors heard of this, they demanded the accused and the papers, but three hours after the demand was made, Fiore was paraded through the streets of Cagliari, receiving two hundred lashes, and was sent to the galleys. The indigent tribunal refused conference and compensia, and promptly excommunicated the vigueur and his assessor. Then the quarrel was transferred to Madrid, where the Suprema and the Council of Aragon alternately for two years pelted the king with consultas, the former assuming that the crime was purely one of faith, and that the jurisdiction of the Inquisition was exclusive. There could be no compensia, because the Inquisitor-General was a sole judge of what constituted cases of faith. In October 1659, the king ordered the excommunication of his judges to be lifted. The Suprema replied that it had commanded this in the previous February, but the inquisitors had given reasons for not obeying. It had repeated the order in August and presumed that it had been complied with, but it had not been, and in November the king reiterated his commands. He decided, however, as usual, in the favor of the inquisition, and the judges were summoned to surrender the prisoner and the papers, but they replied that Fiori had escaped from the galleys and that the papers had been sent to Spain. The Suprema regarded this as an evasion, and the utmost it would do was to suspend the excommunications for six months at a time, especially as the offending judges refused to present themselves before the tribunal and beg for absolution. The time-honored episcopal jurisdiction over begamy was treated with similar imperativeness. In 1650, the Suprema ordered the Valencia Tribunal to demand from the ordinary the case of Joanna Arras, charged with bigamy, because it was a matter of faith, pertaining exclusively to the Inquisition. So in 1658, when the Bishop of Salamanca arrested Domino Moreno on the same charge, as soon as the Validoid inquisitors heard it, they claimed and obtained and tried him. Yet notwithstanding this, the episcopal authority over the sacrament of matrimony was acknowledged, and in all sentences there was a clause referring to the ordinary, the question as to the validity of the marriages. The Roman Inquisition was less aggressive than the Spanish, 
for while it claimed jurisdiction, it was willing that bigamy should be regarded as mixi forti between the secular, the spiritual, and the inquisitional tribunals. If the civil magistrate was the first to take action, he could carry a case to its conclusion and punish the delinquent according to the municipal law. But the episcopal ordinary or the inquisitor ought to demand the culprit for examination as to his belief in the sacrament and then after making him adjure and imposing appropriate penance return him to the secular court offenders were treated with somewhat greater severity than in spain the abjuration was always divinity and torture was freely employed for intention the penalty was the galleys five years in ordinary cases and seven or more when justified by circumstances end of section fifty eight recording by linda ray nielsen vancouver b c